The library is open. So much of our identities, or at least what we believe, are in relation to other people. Um, and so what does it mean to be a non-binary person in a relationship with a gay man, right? Something like that causes the gay identified person sometimes to, to reconceptualize their identity based on who they love, right? We should allow ourselves to realize the fluidity of gender, the fluidity of sexual expression, gender expression, all of that stuff, because it is all on a spectrum and how you love and how you show up in the world today may not be the same in 10 years. And we should welcome that, that exploration and not see it as um, something that is attempting to invalidate who we are, but rather something that is attempting to broaden and expand who you are. I used to feel like I had to play into like heteronormative roles of like, oh, so if you're the bottom, does that mean I'm the wife? Or if you're the top, does that mean you're the husband? Like, I think in the South, especially in the South, that is a strong thing. And for me, I'm like, who cares? That feels exhausting. The core is always there, that I'm like a queer trans person. But like, if I'm with a man, it feels like hetero cosplay sometimes. And then when I date women, it's it feels more comfortable a lot of the times and natural. But then knowing that we're being seen as like a gay couple is strange to think about. And then if I date trans or non-binary people, also feels like home. But yeah, being perceived in the world is not great. I don't want to be perceived uh, publicly. If I'm seen next, standing next to someone who looks visibly either queer or visibly masculine and queer, I suddenly am perceived as queer in the world, you know? And so for me, being solo and single in the world, I, I feel like sometimes I have to be like, oh, by the way, I'm queer. I just want to let you know I'm queer. I feel like I have to keep telling people. I'm open to dating cisgendered men, but I've never partnered ever with a cisgendered man. And I, I wonder how that would challenge my sense of self if I was ever to like walk next to an actual cis man. When I was younger, it was really important for me to be visibly queer. When someone I was dating transitioned in the 90s, it, it, it was a point of contention between us. Like we really had to sort things out. I, you know, had previously been identifying as a dyke and then the next month, it doesn't make sense for me to, tr to identify as a dyke because now my partner identifies as male. But I had so many issues with, you know, cis straight men who doesn't. And so suddenly I had to, I had to deal with, you know, like my man hating and what it meant and what my, what my desire really was. But what was great is that, you know, I am attracted to like men of all sorts. Like I am attracted to cis men. I'm attracted to trans men. I'm attracted to non-binary people. Like I have a very wide, I guess I'm pansexual at the end of the day. I really don't get too caught up in creating or attaching myself to categories. Like I feel that we're all having a human experience, that we're spirits having a human experience. You know, it's a privilege for me to sit here and have to think about the question of how am I perceived in the world and how does that affect me? Because walking down the street by myself, I'm usually ignored, you know, as a, as a white guy. When I'm walking down the street with my husband, it's different, we stand out a bit more, even in big cities, um, because my husband stands out and is more visible, you know, in queerness than I. So it feels unsafe a lot. But I mean, going back to early transition days and, and pre-transition, I don't miss those moments because I, I was harassed constantly. I was um, threatened all the time for doing things like making eye contact with someone on the subway or you know, smiling. When I first came out as trans, I was thinking, okay, once I start being cis-assuming, I'm just gonna like not be a part of the community. Why would I need to? And then once I got there and I was doing it, I was married to a woman living life as a stealth man, straight man. I was the most depressed I'd ever been. <laughs> 
And granted, I was like also very heavy in my addiction. The shame of it all was just so painful and so weighed so heavy on me. Um, so there was nothing to be visible about because I was so ashamed, you know? I thought, w w I don't have anything to be proud of. I hope that we are moving to a space where conversations about passing, conversations about being stealth, that when we're having those conversations, we're, we're legitimately critiquing what we should be, right? Which is not my desire to pass. Rather, we should be focused on the reason why I feel like I have to pass, right? So we should be focused on the violences that people who don't pass experience that cause folks to feel like they have to comport themselves in a way that doesn't, you know, tell our tea to everybody. But as a non-binary person, I don't have the luxury of passing and I would never want the luxury of passing. I like making people uncomfortable because we all got some change that we need to, to do. I don't really like the term passing. It insinuates that like, that's like a, a good thing that's happening versus the bad thing that's happening, which is not passing. Granted, there's a certain level of safety that goes with um, being assumed cis in the world. I prefer to be visibly trans. When people think I'm cis, I feel weird. They don't like it. I tattooed my top surgery scars. <laughs> like, I was just like, they were fading and I was like, ew, I look cis. I don't know what changed, but I felt like I was hiding a lot during the earlier parts of transition, definitely before transition. And then those first few years of transition, I like didn't want to be seen. I wanted to like blend in. I kept trying to get jobs that didn't have coworkers or like bosses, if that makes sense, so that I could like work in solitude. And then something clicked where I'm like, I'm I am a creative person and a performer and I need to get back out there and like do this. And then as I settled into my identity and felt like more confident, I was like, oh, I'm a creative person, maybe in some ways deeper than anything that has to do with gender. One of the coolest things is that I didn't start stand up until after I came out of the closet. I have always been an out comic. It has always been a part of who I am. And I think that my visibility has just changed in that there weren't opportunities for queer comics when I started. There were very few opportunities. And I had to find ways of putting myself into stuff. But I think as the world has evolved and as media has evolved, there has been more space for me to share more of who I am. My visibility as a queer person took on a life of its own where basically every single career move I made was centered around queer visibility. The funny thing is though that I've kind of been coming full circle where I want the fact that I'm queer to be very much known and appreciated, but I don't that want that to be the reason I get hired for things. I used to be one of those people that you could call in when you need to like, you know, check a few boxes. You know, I check like five of them. And so you get me into the space and you got everything covered. I feel like as my identity hasn't evolved, I've just gotten more comfortable being loud, you know, and being visible and being out there and realizing the ways in which my visibility can be of use for somebody else. When I wrote my coming out article, uh, The Secret of My Sex in the independent newspaper, I got such a big response to that from other intersex people. So even though I'm naturally a shy person, I kind of realized that I was getting a platform that very few people were able to occupy and that it was important to use that to help liberate as many intersex and now trans people as possible. My gender hasn't changed. My sexual orientation, whatever, hasn't really changed. The way I describe it has changed over time. The way I see it has changed. Coming to that realization has allowed me to be like really um, grounded in myself. So then I'm like, oh my God, I have so much pride. I feel like I'm overflowing. So then of course I have stuff to share about. And that creates, you know, the motivation to make art and do stuff and make music and talk to people. And so that's where I, I get my joy from. And with joy comes uh, the natural inclination to be visible for me. My visibility now, where I'm at currently, I think you can see it. I think it says that I'm here, I'm ready to take up space, I don't care how much space I'm taking up, and I'm not gonna apologize for it. I, I can't help but remember myself back in high school or back in middle school, and I was like this quiet person who was like afraid to even, like if I make one move, oh my God, everybody gonna know my tea. <laughs> 
right? And like now I'm like, I don't care. I, I would like, you know, it's just such a, a huge difference of who I am. And I think that visibility is going to change. And I think I've understood the importance of that visibility even more and the responsibility of that visibility too. Gay, 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 gay. Gay, gay, gay.